Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Chris Lester here. We're going to talk about a unique product that I was introduced to earlier this year. And as I've been doing a deep dive on some of the improvements to the long-term care conversation, obviously, I've gotten my CLTC, which is a certified long-term care specialist designation recently, but so is Keith. And uh, Caitlin is uh, actually sitting and studying for her 65, and she'll be undertaking this as well. As the more and more I look around, the more and more of a need I see for this uh, important topic. And this strategy is a little different than anything I've seen. And at first, um, you know, I, I was so um, busy doing some of my other stuff with business. I really didn't have a chance to do a deep dive, but we recently have spoken to some of the people that have brought this to America. And I felt that, you know, so critically important that I wanted to share it with everybody. And, and I will, I, I was just amazed that there were solutions for people that are struggling right now. So you'll hear me uh, refer to this as immediate care. This is not long-term care or long-term care insurance, and there is a distinction, and we will get into it. So without further ado, I'll go into um, the, some of the slides. So this is an alarming statistic, and it comes from the Alzheimer's uh, Disease Research and Bright House Foundation. Every 65 seconds, someone in, Amer in America develops Alzheimer's. By mid-century, someone in America will develop the disease every 33 seconds. It is estimated that nearly 500,000 new cases of Alzheimer's will be diagnosed this year. Now, if you've known, seen, or interacted with anybody with any form of dementia, or you start to see the drifting away of the person, the loved one that you knew, you know how incredibly painful this can be. And, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, physically, they're doing okay. But mentally, they start to drift. And there are things that, that we start to take notice of. Um, you know, I'm not going to name names, but I was talking to somebody uh, whose grandfather is uh, 90, 90 years old. And he said, um, you know, he has to write everything down now. He's starting to develop stages of dementia. It's there. It's here. And now as we start to think about it, what I, you know, if, if that person at 90 years old were to approach me last year, all I would have been able to say is, that's a shame. That's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. My prayers. Right? What else can you say? Anybody that, that understands insurance, if it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, look at a long-term care solution, part of the reason, you know, people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, when they look at it, and when I'm doing classes and I ask people who here has looked at long-term care, a lot of people will put up their hands, and then I'll say, how many people have actually put some type of plan in place, and almost no hands go up. And when asked why? Why, what is the issue? Almost to a one, the, it's a resounding unified message of it's too expensive. So we know that, that the cost of taking care of someone, and as I, I just mentioned, I just did some long-term care classes up at Rutgers in Mercer County. And, um, you know, one of the slides that we talk about is, you know, the cost of care right now, and this is being on the conservative side, if you wanted somebody to come into your home and take care of you, it's roughly $27 an hour, right? Because it does, I'm not talking to nurse or skill care. I'm talking for somebody to help us to transfer out of bed, somebody to help us to get to the bathroom, to use the toilet, to feed us, to take our medication. $27 an hour times 24, $648 a day. 30 days, that's close to $20,000 a month. That's in today's dollars. That's $240,000 a year. So when you put the math to it, now what people typically will do and most Americans will do, including my family has done this, is when somebody gets ill, 
people in the family start to step up and provide a portion of that care. People start to step up and try and help. If they're married, the other one will help. If they're not married, right, then maybe a neighbor, right? And, and so with all these, these thoughts going through, the emotional um, uh, stress, putting your life on pause because maybe you're still working, you have younger children, but now uh, you have to take care of a, an aging parent um, or your spouse's aging parents. So it is a complex puzzle. So I, I, I slowed down on this just so that everybody here understands this is going to grow to epidemic proportions. And like I said before, if somebody had come to me and said, hey, I'm 65, um, you know, and, and my spouse here, she's showing signs of, of cognitive disorders or deterioration, I wouldn't be able to help. So, um, Federal Life is an insurance company here uh, in the United States. And for the last 124 years, they've been resilient and nimble as the day it began. So basically, um, they offer first class products. And now um, they are backed by a large uh, capital, capital uh, infusion of funding, which is Bain Capital Insurance. Here's the reason why I was so intrigued. In the United Kingdom or Britain, they don't have long-term care insurance per se. What their society in a socialistic system has figured out, right, is that long-term care insurance, what we're trying to do here, right, they, they don't have that. Those products are not there. The products that are over there in, um, um, in Britain are backed by some German-based companies. But what they've created is this solution that I'm going to share with you, which is a medically underwritten SPIA. A SPIA, you can write these initials down, S-P-I-A, stands for Single Premium Immediate Annuity. And how they work, right, it's an immediate care plan, but unlike a normal SPIA. So let me, let me break it down and sort of start from scratch. You know, annuities, um, you know, there's all, they're all over the, the, the board on, on what problems they can solve. But, but really, annuities in, in, at their core are just like pensions or Social Security. They're designed to create income. Now, when people decide that maybe they might want some type of SPIA, that's called an annuitization. And so what you're doing is you're taking a sum of money and you're trading it with an insurance company. And there are hundreds of insurance companies that offer SPIAs in the United States and thousands of different designs. So with that, um, a traditional SPIA, that let's say you had $100,000, if you gave it to the insurance company, right, they would give you X amount, but there's no medical involved. What they're doing in Britain is they're medically underwriting this. So they're adding an element of science to the equation. And it really, unfortunately, I, I hate to, to, to make it so simple or, or sound so cold, but they're really just designing a bet. How long is this person, based on their medical uh, um, results, expected to live? So how much are, um, are they on the hook for? Should they live too long? Or if the person doesn't live up to the time frame? right? How much money is the trade does the insurance company keep? Now, notice that the ages here are between 70 and 95. That's unheard of. But the reason, and again, I think it's ingenious, is because it's medically underwritten. So what happens is the minimum single premium is 50000 as you can see, up to a million dollars. But we're going to look at a case study here and see how that math plays out. I, I'm just here to, to, to just help people to start to think about this differently, because if you're on this call and you're, you know somebody who's going through this, and for me personally, my wife's grandmother right now, and I'm getting ready to approach her parents, but I've been slow, has been in a nursing home um, for about two years now. And her, my in-laws have taken care of her for the last 10 years since they retired. But it got to the point where they could no longer. So they put her into an assisted living facility. She doesn't have her facilities. 
She really, um, she doesn't recognize anybody when, when, when they show up. And the question then becomes at 92 years old, you know, how long can she maintain or stay alive? Well, the cost of that right now is close to $10,000, $11,000 a month for the facility that they have picked, right? So you go, okay. I, and, and again, I've not you know, asked my in-laws their finances. It's really none of my business. I stay out of it. But on this one, I'm going to ask them to at least take a look at what a design might look like. And so when you turn around and you say, hey, you know, if we were to move X amount, because they're burning through cash, right? So we just know based on the numbers I gave you, they're between 120 and $130,000 a year. And again, I don't know how much they had, but what happens is if they run out of money, either A, they got to reach into their own pocket to keep her there, or B, then if the, if the assisted living facility, you are no longer able to pay, then you are moved to a state-run facility in, in a nursing home, and everybody I talk to, nobody wants to go there. They are not pleasant places, and the quality of care is uh, left to be desired. So, um, if the only question to find out if you're uh, eligible, and this is, you know, this is the question. If somebody were to reach out to me and say, "Hey, you know, uh, I have a family member," the question we're going to ask is, "Are you or a loved one?" currently receiving formal care. And so that key word there is formal care. Are you currently in an assisted living facility? Now, it doesn't mean you have to be in an assisted living facility. You could be at home and you could have care coming from a spouse. But when they go to ask you the questions to be able to generate the estimate, that they, you need to know some of the answers and they may reach out to the current doctors and it's what's called an attending physician statement. So they're going to get that uh, uh, applicant's medical records. And so if you answered yes to this question, either uh, we're currently receiving formal care or we're probably going to uh, put somebody um, uh, in, a, in a facility where we'll have formal care, or it's as close as the, the uh, applicant um, said that they wanted to be without being in a nursing home. So they wanted care at home. If you can answer yes to those general uh, uh, ideas or, or situations, then chances are we can help. So um, with that, Here's this is this, although this is a hypothetical uh, um, example, this is based on a real case um, out of Chicago. So I'm going, I'm not going to read you all the specifics. I just want you to understand that that the that the cost of the facility was one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars for this for this person in this example. And Joseph's Social Security and pension was thirty seven thousand dollars a year. That's leaving a shortfall of $76,000, $77,000 a year. So where does that shortfall come from? So what the daughter did here, who was given the power of attorney, was sold the home, and they had roughly about $500,000. So you could just take a calculator and sit here and divide um, you know, $77,000 into five hundred, dollars and, and you're at about four years. So what happens then if they live longer? And that goes back to that, you know, to me, in my opinion, a very undesirable circumstance, which is being in a uh, nursing home at a state-run facility. Like I said, not anybody that I know uh, typically signs up for that or standing in line for that. So when we look at these numbers here, you're going to see that the shortfall is 76,000, 77,000. The best SPIA rate. So if you turn around and said to, to an insurance company, you said, here, I have half a million dollars. We're going to trade that asset to the insurance company. What is the pool of money that they could get to guarantee the 76800 uh, um, uh, amount of money for life? And the best that they could come up with was they had to turn over 482,000 of the 500 to be able to buy that, that, that income. But with an immediate care plan, a medically underwritten SPIA, 
they were able to, to trade less money to be able to generate. So that now think about that. Instead of giving the insurance company the 482, they're able to give them 231, therefore keeping the remainder of 268 for extended costs, other ailments, or ultimately if there's any type of legacy planning. So to me, in my mind, this is what got my attention is that, that, that the math made sense. And this is the one hurdle that you turn around and you're saying, hey, listen, you know, when they underwrite this, they're saying, hey, you know, based on all the conditions, we think that, that they have, you know, three years left. And that was the remaining uh, savings. So here, this just talks about, there are different options, but the only one, and again, this is part of the quote and what it looks like, is that you get 0% COLA cost of living. So there's that $231,540 that gets guaranteed to provide that $76,000, right? So, and that's life only. So, so by trading that asset, you know, now we don't have to worry about what if they live too long and we can fill that income gap. And that's really the short answer or the design of this. So, you know, um, if somebody says, hey, listen, you know what? I think that they were younger, they were 72 and they could very well live for another 20 years. So what is maybe, maybe doing an 8% cost of living uh, roll up um, you know, might be uh, an option. So the, there, are, there are things you can do. And then there's also in the, in the world of insurance, there's what we call period certain. So whether it's one year, two year, three year, four year, what that says is, you know, you don't have to use it or lose it. You could turn around and say, hey, you know what? I'll take a one year period certain. We'll give you a little bit mo more money. But it, even if that person passes, whatever the remaining amount was, the beneficiaries would still get. There's just options, right? And versus allowing, uh, you know, the evaporation of somebody's hard-earned, um, you know, assets in the state um, just, just wither away. So some other features, um, you know, if somebody passes away in the first month of turnaround and taking on a strategy, 100% return of the, of the premium. In the next two to three months, 50% gets returned. Four to six months, 25%, and then it's zero. And that's where you, some people will turn around and say, oh, well, you know, if, if, I, if, they, if they die too soon, then you lose the money. And yes, that, that is a fact. That would happen. But the question is, is, and nobody other than our higher power knows how much time we have left on this planet. But there are times when, you know what, you might say, hey, I think this to me would give us peace of mind. And that's really what this is all about is providing peace of mind and, and allowing people to remain in an environment that they were comfortable with and probably should they had their, their facilities would want to remain in. Now, remember I said this is not long-term care because long-term care, as you've uh, heard me talk about in the past, has unique tax advantages. However, if you turn around and you put money into a medically in, um, underwritten SPIA, the income that is generated out of that is reportable on taxes. So we have to take that into consideration. But it's how we're able to turn around um, and, and, and this works for either, uh, you'll hear me use the term, whether it's non-qualified or qualified. What does that mean? If you have money in a brokerage account or a CD or a savings account, that's called non-qualified. If you're getting a 1099 every year, that's, that's non-qualified money. And, and quite often you can fund a strategy like that, like in the sale of that house, that would be a non-qualified uh, design. But there are a lot of people that have money in uh, IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, TSPs. And if you wanted to do that in this design, you can do use qualified money. But remember, the taxes were never paid on that, that uh, um, account. So when the money comes out, even though we're using it for long-term care benefits, now you do get some tax deductions because some of it, if you're over seven and a half percent in the cost of care and medically, you know, I'm not going to get into the, all the, uh, the, the tax advantages or the tax code, but just venture to understand that when money comes out to pay for uh, the, um, the, the care, there, it is a taxable event. So, you know, and there's no fees or um, sales charges on this. So if you put in X amount, that full amount is being used for the care of a loved one. 
that's really, uh, to me, I, I was, I'm extremely um, optimistic that uh, we're going to be able to help families in the future. Uh, for all of you that are on this call today, everybody at Professional Planning Services, we want to wish you a happy and safe 4th of July. You know, this is the greatest country in the world. And we all together, um, you know, just make sure you hug the ones you're with. Things are crazy out there. Stay safe. But if you need us, if we can help, um, we're happy to do so. So everybody, you know, I just uh, want to thank all of you.